Welcome back to a best of three series of professional StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Zerg versus Protoss, where in game number one we find ourselves on Hardwire. Spotting right here in the top right hand corner of the map, playing with the blue Zerg drones. From South Korea, we have Armani. His opponent in the opposite corner with the yellow Protoss probes, we are looking at Raynor's main Nexus. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I almost feel a little bit dirty saying Raynor's main Nexus. Raynor, for some reason, and I'm still not entirely sure why, He's been playing his off races an awful lot. So he's been playing a lot of Terran, but especially a lot of Protoss in tournaments. So I know, you know, there's something to be said for off racing on your live stream and just, you know, messing around and maybe doing a couple warm up games here and there. But Raynor actually seems to be quite serious about getting better with both Terran and Protoss, which is very interesting. I don't really know if there's any, like, long term plan to it, right? Like, is there any. I don't know. Maybe I should ask him, but <laughs> he's just kind of having fun and. Yeah, learning Terran and both Protoss as well. Protoss apparently is looking really strong right now. Wordless Street has it. The StarCraft Street, that is. That apparently both his Terran and his Protoss are actually at, like, mid-level pro gamer, like, skill. Which is, yeah, pretty sick. Pretty impressive. He's been beating some really good players. For example, apparently uh, Hero Marine, there's a, a clip circulating the internet right now where apparently Hero Marine wasn't entirely happy about... I think he was losing to... If I recall correctly, I think it was a Protoss versus Terran where Raynor was playing Protoss and he ended up beating Hero Marine. Anyways, Hero Marine obviously one of the very best Europeans. Not entirely uh, keen on, yeah, losing games to one of his main competitors off races, right? It's not really where you want to be. Now, I did cast that series, or that match rather, between Raynor playing Protoss against Serral. That match, it was from about a year ago, as I mentioned in the cast as well. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of this one. Really fun game against Serral, where Raynor is also playing with the Protoss probes. Um, that game certainly showed us that Raynor is more than capable of, well, playing a good macro game with Protoss. And I think that's one of, like, I, I know I'm kind of fanboying here and I don't really want to get carried away, but... Um, most of the time, whenever someone plays their off races, it'll be a more cheesy, a more aggressive playstyle, right? Like, it's hard to be good at StarCraft in the first place, and it's especially hard to be good at StarCraft with multiple races, just because there's a lot of nuance to every single one of them, right? You need to hi you need to micro a little bit differently, you need to understand the positions in the game very, very well, and it's just really tricky to play macro with all three. And that's what I guess is very impressive about the whole Raynor playing his off races situation. He's not been cheesing, he's not been, like, playing hyper-aggressive strats, He's just been having fun playing macro games, which is, yeah, pretty neat. Anyways, Armani, still definitely the favorite, though, in my mind. He's one of the best Zerg players from South Korea. Maybe not quite at the level of, like, a, a Rogue or a Dark or a Solar or maybe even Sue, although it's kind of hard to say where Sue is currently at, having just come back from the military. Uh, he's definitely very good. He's definitely very strong, so... Yeah, we'll find out. It's gonna be a Stargate opener right here from Raynor. Going straight into the Oracle. Not an uncommon build in the current meta whatsoever. You see this all of the time. One of the things we've been seeing quite a bit in Protoss vs. Zerg lately, this is like a development over the last couple of weeks. It's gonna be a Phoenix, by the way, as a follow-up right now. Um, we've been seeing a lot of, like, very low gas Protoss armies. So Protoss gets, like, three to four gases or so, and just a gajillion gateway units with very quick upgrades. Kind of like that style that we saw both Nice and Haas playing. Like, uh, I think Hasp was probably the one that came up with it, mostly. Um, like, uh, I don't know, a year or two ago? Armani had full scout right over here. Okay. Ugh, there's no spore in the... Okay, that was actually quite sloppy. Losing four drones right there when you know exactly what your opponent is going for is certainly not what you want. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate there. Uh, no, don't do it! Don't, uh, don't do it! Alright. Apparently, Raynor also feeling a little bit guilty about it. Wanted to throw a revelation right there, but didn't expect the queens to be that close to the edge of the creep, and he ends up losing the oracle. A little bit sloppy. Anyways, the overlord at this point has been killed by the phoenix, and Raynor has decided to add on a second stargate. Alright. So, mass phoenix play is something we used to see back in the day, but it's not very popular anymore right now. I mean, we didn't see it for a good while, because everyone was playing mass void ray, obviously. Okay, yeah. So he probably wants to go for the plus one flyer attacks, but Armani's scouting it out over here. He's checking the cyber core to see if it's moving. And if it's not moving, or not very quickly anyways, it means that there's nothing researching. 
Anyways, at this point, Armani doesn't know what he's going up against. He's lost that Overlord. I don't think he's going to be able to fly in another Overlord either. Which means that the main question we got to ask ourselves is how many Phoenixes is Raynor going to make before he shows them? You're almost always going to deal some sort of damage with Phoenixes. But how much damage will you actually be able to deal? Okay, a couple of Zerklings over here. There's no Glaives or anything like that. Okay. Decides to recall a couple of those Adepts. Not the cleanest early game here from Raynor so far, but I guess we can excuse him that. Plus one, as well as the Roach speed upgrade right here for Armani. He has no clue. So he's got six Queens, which is very nice. He's got a healthy amount of drones too. Phoenix is on their own though, can't really deal that much. Okay, finally he moves out. Zerklings are going to spot them as well. Nice scout right here, actually, by Armani. Very important. Um, Phoenixes will pretty much always deal damage. Like, they're very good at harassing, but they generally don't end the game. Like, Zerks don't really have to be too concerned. Nice movement here once again by Armani. So, yeah, additional spore in the main. Two spores in the natural. This will allow him to defend against these Phoenixes relatively easily. But they're always going to deal some sort of damage. That's the tricky part. So he's gone straight into a Spire. That's certainly going to be for Corruptors. No way in hell that's going to be Mutas here. Overall though, yeah, I like the Phoenix opener, but it's not going to be something that can really end the game for you. The problem is you can just make a... Okay, he wants to go for the 1-2 punch, but there's already Zerk units over here at the third base too. Clean defense here from Armani. Doing a good job. Ah. Nice shuffling right there on that late back of the, or that Phoenix rudder as well. Getting the low HP Phoenixes in the back. Okay, Rainer's picking up the pace. Rainer first became very good at playing StarCraft. Um, probably like, I don't know, I want to say like 2018 or so. He was known to have really good early game, but especially really good mid game. His late game was like the one thing we used to criticize as casters quite a bit. He used to go absolutely crazy in the mid game. I can imagine that both his Terran and his Protals are going to be kind of similar at this point. Where, like, his mid-game is going to be extremely good. And that's where we've arrived right now. So he's gone for a fourth Nexus. Uh, Armani doesn't know if the Adepts are still on his side of the map, so he doesn't really want to send out the Lynx. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to commit to making 100 Zorklings here either. No, instead, you're kind of forcing the macro game with Phoenixes. He just wants to drone up the fourth base here instead. He's got himself uh, 10 Corruptors coming up. That's going to be good at dealing with those Phoenixes for now. But already, ah, there is a plus one Flyer attack coming up too. I was going to say, Rainer seems to be going for a transition. I almost wonder if that's a fake, because there was a, a scout over there just now. Anyways, it seems to be a ground transition here from uh, from Rainer. But he's also simultaneously reaching fly or researching Flyer attack. Maybe it's just for the existing Phoenixes, or maybe for like a potential late game transition. But this is a bit of a strange unit comp that we normally don't see. By the way, uh, the Archon is stuck. Gotta need a prism over here to free that bad boy. Yeah, I can't go anywhere. It's too thick. Alright, Corruptors are out. Corruptors are very tanky units. They're gonna be very nice to have around, but he still doubles down anyways on Phoenix production. Interesting. A more conventional approach right here from Armani. I like this a lot, though. So he's going to be able to get up to full 4 base saturation, which is going to allow him to very, very easily pump out the Bane Links. Evo Chamber here is late. Kind of wished... Uh, oh, actually, it's the second Evo. I was going to say, that seems extremely late. Oh, was that literally on the screen and I didn't see it? I was going to say, I thought I saw one earlier. No, I think I was looking at it like that. Please tell me it wasn't literally right there at the bottom of my screen. <laughs> Anyways, it's his second Evo to go for melee upgrades at the same time. That would have been a big criticism right there for Armani, but he's doing a good job, yeah. In the end, he lost 14 drones, sure, but now Protoss has, you know, 15 Phoenixes that aren't really going to be that helpful. The Phoenixes will need to deal more damage than they've done right now. Like, usually later on in, like, a, a big battle, they're kind of like paper planes. Sure, they're nice to have around and they have quite a bit of health, but, like, they don't really do that much. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Armani going into a Hydra then right now, together with a Hive. Going 5th base as well. You know what though, if you're Armani in this scenario, you have everything to lose, right? 
Whereas if you're Raynor, everyone kind of expects you to lose against someone of the caliber of Armani. So maybe Armani is there for like not playing aggressively at all. He's like, you know what? I do not want to take any chances. Because I think this is an opportunity for him to go for a fight if he wants to, but... He's just instead decided to go for a fifth base, go into a lurker den, build up a hive, go double upgrades, just sit on the creep. Yeah, rely on counterattacks instead. Okay, these Zerklings should be definitely enough to kill that Nexus, or at the very least, force the cancel. It's a lot of Zerklings as well, though. Yeah, quite a lot of links. That's also because he's busy right here, microing on the left side of the map. The Phoenix count is higher than he was expecting, and obviously Phoenixes are much faster than Corruptors, so nowhere for them to run. He's trying to target fire down the weakened Phoenixes first, and it's kind of working out, but the Corruptors are actually losing the battle here. This is a very strange fight. Alright, it's gonna be Hydra's here. So Hydra, Lurker, Ling, Bane with, I'm imagining, Viper support? It's a very complex unit composition for Armani. But Armani has a good amount of stuff. Now, Raynor really needs to, like, this is a thing that we've seen a lot from Zerks. Where if they are allowed to make workers at the same time as they're making army, right? Which you can't really do as Zerk. They get carried away from making, uh, yeah, too many pro So he's got 95 probes. He's once more, by the way, just like we saw in that game against Serral. Prioritizing shield upgrades. Which is a big indicator that he wants to make a lot of Archons. Alright, here come the Banelings on the left side of the map. Good storm. That, that was perfect. Flawless defense right there from Raynor. Pretty expensive set of units too. Honestly, look at the traits so far. Protoss barely losing anything in comparison to the Zerk anyways. Armani probably thinks he has the supply, or sorry, the economy uh, advantage at this point, but he's really not. <laughs> 99 probes! Stop it, Raynor! Okay, you can make one more. Raynor, I told you to stop it, but can you make one more? That'd be nice. Anyways, big storms right here over here. Splitting up the army once more. Once more, at least compared to the game that he played against Serral. We normally don't see Protoss players splitting up their army at this stage in the game. We also normally don't see them marching around like this. Okay, he's trying to set up like a, a surround over here. I kind of love it. Armani trying to catch this army and make sure it can't retreat. There's good reason why we normally see observers as well as... Uh, what are they called? Warp Prisms with those Protoss armies. It's to make sure they can actually move around. He used Recall right here on the army on the... Yeah, the top section of the map, so... That wasn't an option for that main force. Good movement there by Armani. But Rainer's already maxed out once more. Alright, so soon we're gonna have full upgrades on the Zerg. It should absolutely tear through these ground-based armies here of the Protoss. Zealots trying to be annoying, but the Zerklings are well upgraded here. Reinforcing units should be fine against this. Uh, he's gonna send some of the main army back too, just in case. Mm. Alright, this is the moment. Raynor's been happily researching attack upgrades. No uh, Zealot in the wall, by the way, but he is happily attacking... Uh, the Zerk over here once again, he's now going for a transition towards a, like a, an air-based army. Hydra Lurker is good, but not good at dealing with Skytos. I'm surprised we haven't seen any... Any real addition right here from Amani to Vipers. I feel like Vipers are the obvious answer here to a lot of these Protoss units. Like, you, you can imagine here that Protoss isn't going to stick around on this army, right? And abducting Archons is not a bad situation either. I mean, they're expensive, I get that, but he's got some money. Better than roaches, that's for sure. Anyways, still a very good fight right here, though, for Armani. Slowly getting rid of that base. Forcing Protoss into a bit of a choke over here. In the meantime, Zerklings, yeah, they're ready to finish the job here on the right side of the map. Is there enough, though, for the Protoss to push this back? At this point, there's not a lot of anti-air here with this Zerk force. He decides to double dine on Hydras. I would love to see some upgrades. Okay, they'll snipe one of the carriers there. I would love to see a, a Spire upgrade coming up. Alright, there we go. Yeah, continuously upgrade those units. Apparently, I don't see upgrades today. <laughs> Apparently, I'm blind as a bet. This is why I need a, a co-commentator every once in a while. Nah, actually, I like solo casting. But apparently, I'm blind for upgrades. Anyhow. 
This is important, though, because at some point you probably want to make the transition towards a lot of Corruptors. And there it is. 16 of them are coming up. Raynor has minerals for days, so he's happy to warp in Zealots. Double X pending. Wouldn't even be surprised to see another Nexus coming up over here, because Raynor has got so much money. He's honestly got so much money, like, too many probes. If you have this much supply caught up in workers, your eventual army is not going to be that big. So now, by the way, is when we finally see armor upgrades coming up as well on the Forge. That's kind of cool. More Stargates, sure. Alright. Oh. Storm. Big Storm, actually. Yeah, now the Corruptors are here, right? And those Corruptors are super good at chasing down those uh, big capital ships. Plenty of DPS on the ground remains as well here for Armani. Going Corruptor Hydra, the best unit composition in the book. I've been playing this long before it was cool. Everyone knows that. Anyhow, um, he's gone for a lot of Zerklings right now too. And I guess that's mostly the deal right here with these Zealot Runbys. At the same time though, okay. Phoenixes trying to get some value in, but it's not really happening. The real, the real winning move, I guess, though, for Raynor at this point is just the sheer amount of money that you've got at this point in the game. Like, normally Protoss, after taking fights like that, are broke. But Raynor, he's got so, like, he's still got way more money here than Armani. So I can imagine that Armani is a little confused here, too, because his eco has been fantastic this entire game. The splitting of the armies is actually really sick. Like, normally Protoss is just one big ball. He's got to be careful, though. Those Zealots, okay, nice splits. All right, nice splits indeed. Zealots over there, kill the base. Carriers over here, trying to be annoying. Bailings do want to connect with the Zealots in the top left corner, and I think they'll probably get that in a second. Corruptors did snipe the base. Okay. Yeah, Bailings decided to take the safe route onto the creep instead. Greater Spires coming up. So normally Protosses don't really go over like 80 workers or so. It doesn't sound like a big difference, but getting like, you know, give or take 20 additional probes. 10 to 20 additional probes is going to give you a substantial income difference over the course of like 10 minutes. It adds up very rapidly. Armani not entirely sure about what he should be doing at this point. Like, this is not really a ground army, but it's also not really a Skytol's army, right? Like, this is a strange army, but it seems to be working out just fine. Banelings, though, do crash through those Arkles there at some point, and I think, indeed, that this is going to allow him to push it back. Capital ship ends up going down, too. In the meantime, though, the Zealots that we saw on the left side of the map are dealing a bunch of damage over here. And, well, the group over here on the right side wanted to... Ah, okay. They wanted to deal damage. I thought they were actually going to be able to do so, but nice defense there by Armani. Investing in a ton of static defense, making it so that those Zealot runbys are finally halted, somewhat. It's gonna be careful though, I don't think that two lurkers are really gonna be that much. It's gonna take forever for them to kill those, uh, those Zealots. Dude, how many Zealots have we had? I mean, Zealots and Zorklings, they start with the same letter. They're like the earliest unit you can make with both Protals as well as Zerk. I guess these are Zealot runbys? Kind of done like Zorkling runbys? One thing I've been criticizing about professional Protals players for a long time is the fact that usually with Zealot runbys, they don't look at them anymore. So a lot of Protals players will like just send in the units. Oh, I actually hold that thought. Yeah, this is a very expensive set of Lurkers to lose. They, they don't even kill the Nexus either. Normally, Protosses will just, like, make a bunch of Zealots and then shift Q the attack command to where they want them to go and then not look at them anymore. Raynor has definitely been looking at them. Look at his actions per minute. 484. Dude! Raynor's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a very well-established Zerk. And I think he's actually winning this game. In a very Zergy way. Like, he's playing a very Zergy way of Protoss. He's got to be careful, though. Uh, I mean, Parasitic Bomb carriers don't really care that much about Parasitic Bomb. <laughs> they really don't care. Ay, 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 okay, that was painful, dude. They just kind of stood there and took it to the face. I think Rainer probably looked at it and he's like, I don't need to micro that. 
It's barely gonna tickle the may the, the base health right there on those bad boys. Microing that takes a lot of effort. Instead, I'll just focus my efforts on microing the other fights. Okay, now follow-up parasitics might be a little bit more painful, but still, so many Protoss units remain. <laughs> Game number one goes in favor of the Italian. Okay, so here we are. Game number two is on 2,000 atmospheres. Yeah, impressive stuff. Like, there's nothing cheesy about the way that that was played. That was just straightforward, active gameplay. You can still that there, you, you can definitely see that there's still a lot of experimenting going on, right? Like, the early game wasn't the cleanest, and the splitting of those Protoss armies wasn't as ideal as you probably want it to be either. But there's clearly a lot of value in having your army split up. We don't really see Protoss players doing that, honestly. Like, it's it's been historically at least the case that Protosses kind of keep their main army in one big ball, and then they obviously do like run bys and, and you know zealot war pins and like the opponent's main base and maybe small groups of adepts here and there. But it's almost like Rainer like took his army, like if this is his army right over here, he just sliced it in half and then send it into two control groups and send it around the map. Now obviously that one time in the middle of that hardwire game, um, yeah, the entire Protoss army got crushed. But many times there it actually worked out just fine. Very cool. I also think there was some opportunity though for Armani to potentially win the game a little bit earlier on. Like he decided to play a very passive game, probably assuming he was going to be able to overpower, or overpower his opponent in like the later stages of it. Right, so he was... Like, he had a good opportunity when he was on full 4-base saturation, he was getting the 5th base. He had, like, a good Road Ravager Link Bane potential there. And there wasn't really that much available yet at that point in the game for Raynor. Like, he had, like, a... I don't know, still, like, a dozen Phoenixes up in the air that weren't really that helpful. I think there was an opportunity for Armani to go for a push right there, but... I might be mistaken. Either way, he didn't go for it. Now we're in game number 2. Is it gonna be a Stargate opener once more? We'll find out here in a second. Uh, I think it is. Cybernetic score not spinning here. He's delaying the warp gate research. Yep. It means you're saving up some gas to go for the Stargate a little bit quicker. And then usually as a follow-up, we'll still see uh, the warp gate research start up a bit sooner. Or sorry, a bit sooner, a bit later. Um, not the end of the world, obviously, at all. You're still going to be able to finish it up at a respectable time, and this is a very common way of playing. So judging by that timing alone, Armani should already know that this is 9 times out of 10. Maybe 99 out of 100 times got to be a Stargate approach. He's going endo with the OV, just to confirm. And he knows. I wonder if the 90 plus probes was even a mistake in the first place. It kind of felt like Raynor got carried away making those workers, but maybe not. Like, it eventually allowed him to go for those crazy zealot run bys, Which really is very reminiscent of the way that he plays the Zerkling run bys. Like, Zerks will, by the way, just to clarify, like, a lot of Protoss players will not really look at their zealot run bys very much, but Zerks do need to look at the, uh, at the Zerkling run by just because of the fact that there's a lot of units that can easily kill him, right? They get stuck on a lot of stuff, like, I don't know, a Zealot in the choke point with a battery behind it, or like a bunch of Photon Cannons. Like, the AI of Zerklings can be a bit wonky. Um, zealots usually don't really have that issue as quickly. I mean, you still want to check it, obviously, ideally. But, yeah. You can imagine Raynor actually has his, like, run-by groups and whatnot on hotkeys and stuff. Anyway, Oracle, sorry, wasn't paying attention to that one. Didn't do any damage. Maybe uh, Rainer hurt that there's not a lot of Protoss players out right now at the professional level. Some of the best ones are currently over in South Korean military service, right? So they, they you know, <laughs> Rainer's like, hold my, uh, hold my spaghetti. Oh no, I think he actually lives in the UK right now. Anyways, um, hold, hold my. 
uh, fish and chips. Anyways, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give Protals a try myself. There's this one moment in StarCraft 1. Uh, okay. In Brood War. Where Mr. Flash, the greatest Brood War player of all time, and a Terran player, decided to switch to random. And in case you're unfamiliar with the story, basically after like a decade of dominating the South Korean StarCraft 1 scene, uh, playing Terran, I guess he got sick and tired of people, I don't know, that's what I'd like to imagine anyways, that people are like, ah, the only reason he wins is because he's playing Terran. If he was Protoss or Zerg, he would have never been so successful, right? Anyways, that's what I imagine. Maybe it's just wishful thinking on my end that he's just trying to like give the middle finger to the haters. Either way, he decided to switch to a random for a while and he still ended up winning tournaments as well, which is incredibly impressive. It'd be kind of cool if we had a, a random player at the, to at the top level. That'd be... That'd be kind of sick. There is definitely an advantage, right? Like, if you can... If you can play all three races equally... There's definitely an advantage in playing, you know, random. Just because there is gonna be that question mark. It is gonna be a little harder for the opponent to prepare. I know some people think that random players need to... Say what they're playing at the beginning of the game. For example, I know that, like, for example, Winter does that on his stream whenever he plays random. He always announces the race that he spawned as at the beginning of the game. Honestly, I don't think you need to do that at all. You have zero obligation to do it. Like, obviously you can if you want to, but... Yeah, it does make sense to play random in tournaments if you can actually equally play them. It's just nearly impossible, and at this point, it's never really happened where someone is good enough to actually participate uh, with all three races, but... Rainer seems to only have really been playing his, uh, his off races again for maybe a couple weeks at this point. Maybe he's always played them, but he never really showed it. Either way, um... Yeah. With a bit more practice, if he cleans up the early game a little, like losing the two oracles here is definitely not what you want to do. Uh, if he cleans up the early game a little bit, I think he's actually going to be a very formidable player. Cleaning up the early game is probably the easiest part. It's just a matter of grinding. Like, the early game is very well figured out that it's one of those things that you can just practice over and over and over and over again. But once you get to the mid to late game stages, especially in the mid game, it's a lot of reactionary play and a lot of decision making that are strategic, right? I know, a strategy game with strategic decisions, wild. But the early game is well figured out and you don't really need to think as much. That's usually considered to be the hardest part of the match. And Rainer seems to be having a, yeah, a good time, which is cool. Anyhow. Zerk, once more, focusing on a more passive approach. Melee upgrade, Roach speed, Baneling speed. He did go for a very quick uh, plus one melee here, which I personally am a big fan of. So it's gonna allow him to get those Zerkling upgrades really quickly, and I think that's probably also the reason why he's going Infestation Pit. To go straight into a Hive, and I'll probably continue researching uh, Adrenal Glands, maybe plus three melee, that'd be sick. Excellent creep spread here as well, by the way, by Armani. Armani making all the right moves. Early game, definitely going in his favor. Is he gonna try and capitalize on it, though? Rainer wants more, already at 84 probes, by the way. Still making more. Another hatchery coming up on the left side of the map. There's a drop alert happening too. Okay, we're gonna go for a Baneling drop. Not something we see all too often. And honestly, this is a move that Raynor likes to go for every once in a while. Shouldn't work against him, right? Right? <laughs> Maybe I'm mistaken. Alright, so. Good force field over there. Flawless force field. Good storm over there as well, keeping those units alive for now. A lot of chaos being created here by the Zerk player. Now the Banelings do move in though, there's a, a fight going on at the 12 o'clock position, and you know what? That plus two melee timing, nicely done right there. Armani had to create chaos at multiple angles at once in order for that for him to work out. But it did. Oh no, there's one more. Yeah, no pool right there by Raynor. Loses 23 probes, still has 71. Still is pumping out four of them at once. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, so normally, in a normal game right now, you'd be like, okay, I killed 23 probes. Protoss has like 50. Right? But Rainer's like, no, 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 no. I've already got a good eco once again. And you gotta keep in mind, those, those Zerg units aren't free. It's very expensive. Uh, we saw that in the previous game, too. Maybe the O army hotkey? I don't know. No council on that base either. Okay, things are going quite a bit worse right here. For the Italian Stallion, but I mean, those units and losing those big chunks of Protals are... Or sorry, of Zerg are very expensive. Like, those storms just cleared a thousand plus resources right there. And the storms are still here. Additional probes end up going down. This second wave over here, once again, killing a lot of workers. But not as successful as the first, and there's still 60 plus probes. 47 workers have died here in total on the side of the Protals. And we're still at 64. Popping out, you know, three, four at a time. He's rebuilding easy peasy. Rebuilding the, uh, or re-researching once again, by the way, the shield upgrades. Which is really curious. We pretty much always see armor. I do love this, though, for Marmani. Not just sticking around on this unit comp, but actually going up to Greater Spire here is a fantastic idea. That's the ultimate counter to this Protoss ground unit. Stalkers are obviously strong, but enough, uh, enough Brute Lords can kill with basically any ground-based army. Okay. Uh, good storms, though. Really good storms. I'm a little concerned that Armani at this point is overestimating his position. Because, like, don't get me wrong, he's ahead. But not by as much as you would normally imagine. Next is coming up over here. There's another Banelink full of... Or, sorry, another Overlord here full of Banelinks. That one's probably going to make a beeline for the base at the 12 o'clock here in a sec. Armani trying to create some chaos again. Hit his opponent at several different angles at once. Okay. Keeping that Protoss army split up brilliantly, though. Some good storms. This time around, though, Banelinks do finally connect with some of that Protoss army. Okay, there's more on the back of that from Armani, but if you look at the supply counts... Guys, look at the supply count. I mean, it's, both, it's mostly here because Armani has forgotten to macro. 30 supply lead right now for Raynor. Raynor also hasn't macroed in a bit. You could go for a warp in. Yeah, I don't think anyone would mind a warp in. There we go. 90 plus Zorklings here are coming up for Armani. I think he's just gonna make like another 50 Banelinks and then go for it again. Wouldn't be surprised. If there's one thing that's really good at defending against Banelings, though, it's the Archon. Rainer's at 80 probes again. <laughs> okay. Good storms over there, too. Oh, my God. Ugh, this is starting to look worse and worse for the Zerk. Okay, once again, 18 probes just got blown up. But Rainer doesn't seem to care much. Like, he's just remaking the probes. Like, losing 90 Banelinks is incredibly expensive. Like, 90 Banelinks is far more expensive than 70 probes. Like, obviously, that's not the only thing that they've killed, but... It's not as dire as you normally imagine. I, I almost feel like this is, like... An undiscovered Protoss playstyle. With, like, heavy probes, heavy shield upgrades, and heavy Archon focus. Those Archons, with those shield upgrades, are going to be able to withstand so many Zerg hits. And against this Ravagerling Bane-based army comp, this is not a cost-efficient unit comp, and Armani knows it. Uh, making that many probes actually makes a lot of sense. In a way, I almost feel like Raynor is almost shooting himself at a foot a little bit, because he's showing Protoss how to deal with this. Because he plays this style all the time. Like, he plays with this Zerg unit comp all of the time. Anyhow. Here we go once more. The Protoss army is obviously well split up. Armani. Okay, this is a fine engagement for him. We could finish off the Nexus. That'd be nice. Here come the Archons, though. All right. Armani adds on more Zerklings. Uh, he's got a Greater Spire. I would actually love it if he decided to add on some Greater Spire units. Because 
It's really about time that we see... Oh my god, those Archons. Yeah, those Archons are gonna have a blast. Quite literally. Uh. Armani, don't get carried away. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I like the Banelings here, man. Okay. Raynor also doesn't know if you like stepping that deep onto the creep. There's not a juicy expo over here in the bottom right that's definitely ripe for some Zelda run bys. Okay, there's the plus one flyer attack. Can we, can we, okay. Yo, Armani, can we make like a group of Corruptors and make some, some Brutes? Because I'm a little afraid that at some point there's going to be like 10 Archons out and they're just going to like march across the map. And a Roachling Bane army is not going to deal with those maxed out Archons very well at all. There's the Shields level 3 finishing. Oh god. Um, Armani? No, those are those are mutas, bro. Okay, so his threat is to try and like bleed his opponent out. So far, there hasn't been a lot of bleeding out though on the side of Rainer. He is maxed, or close to it, anyways. He does have a good unit comp. Not a whole lot of follow-up potential here for the Protals, though. Okay, he loses even more probes. Rainer's Protals is actually really good. Here comes the Bulldozer. Like, this is this is what I was trying to say. Like, this is an army comp that you're not going to kill with a Zerkling-based army. Like, those Archons are going to have uh, such a good time killing clumped-up units. Zerklings are so small. Corrosive Biles will need to connect. There's a good storm. There's another really nice storm. Oh. Oh, those storms. Oh, my God. Oh my god, Rainer. Is there enough? He's desperately adding on 12 roaches right now. Rainer's still at an economical advantage. He's expending. Blinking aggressively into those Zerg units. The Ravages are raining desperate corrosive biles, but there's roaches coming out. Zealots right now in the bottom right -hand corner. Additional Zealots warped in from the right side of the map too, trying to create like a... Yeah, a surround right here, a sandwich on those Ravagers. There's the Corrosive Balls once again, but Rainer splits against them. 20 drones end up going down. Armani certainly got carried away playing that Ravager Ling Bane style. Rainer at this point also sees that there's a greater spire out. Probably wondering why there weren't any Brute Lords. Anyhow, Raynor just ended up beating Armani 2-0 with Protoss. And I think it certainly shows us that he's more than capable of playing competitive StarCraft 2 with the Protoss pieces. Pretty sick.